Velazdone, also known as Vibrid, is one of the newest antidepressants available on the market. And unlike some of the older antidepressants, Velazdone works through a unique mechanism of action that supposedly gives it a leg up against the competition. But is Velazdone actually better than older options like the sertralines and the escitalopram's of the world, or is Velazdone just another new patented drug that's expensive for no reason? How's everyone doing? It's Isaac Wade, Doctor of Pharmacy, and in this video, we'll be discussing all things Velazidone, including how it works, common side effects, how to take it, and some of my own personal thoughts and opinions about the medication. As always, this video is for informational purposes only. Always consult with your healthcare provider for any of your personal health concerns. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First of all, let's talk about what Velazidone is used for. And unlike some of the other antidepressants which are approved for treating anything from anxiety to PTSD to chronic pain, Velazidone is only approved for treating major depressive disorder. Now, let's talk about how Velazidone works. Velazidone is an antidepressant that enhances the action of serotonin, which is known as the happy brain chemical. And it does this in two different ways. First of all, just like regular SSRIs or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, velazidone blocks the reuptake of serotonin into neurons by inhibiting the serotonin transporter known as SERT. This allows for more serotonin to stay in the synapse or the space between neurons available to activate the postsynaptic neuron, leading to more serotonergic signaling and eventually improvements in depressive symptoms. However, there exists one problem. There's a receptor on the presynaptic neuron called the serotonin 1A autoreceptor, which through negative feedback reduces the amount of serotonin a neuron can release. Here is where velazidone's second modes of action kicks in. On top of preventing the reuptake of serotonin, velazidone also binds to and partially activates the serotonin 1A autoreceptor. This is speculated to desensitize the receptor faster than traditional SSRIs, leading to a quicker onset of action, and the manufacturer claims that velazidone is able to reduce depressive symptoms in as little as one to two weeks versus most other antidepressants which take between two to four weeks. However, this advantage has not been verified and is still largely speculative. All right, so now that we've discussed how velazidone works, let's talk about how velazidone is taken. And velazidone should be taken once per day with food, as food improves its absorption by as much as 50%. Velazidone can be taken at any time of the day as long as it's taken at the same time every day. To reduce the risk of side effects, the dose of elazidone should be increased slowly. Typically, a starting 10 milligram dose is taken once per day for one week, and then 20 milligrams is taken once per day for another week, and then 40 milligrams is taken thereafter. However, if the patient experiences side effects or if a drug interaction needs to be managed, a 20 milligram dose is also reasonable. Like most other antidepressants, velazidone might cause a discontinuation syndrome, such as anxiety, difficulty sleeping, and electric shocks, if velazidone is stopped abruptly. So rather than stopping the drug cold turkey, it should be gradually reduced over a period of a few weeks. When it comes to efficacy, velazidone is generally comparable to other antidepressants, which is a modest improvement versus placebo with more efficacy seen in more severe depression. And the efficacy of velazidone was mostly demonstrated in large eight week long phase three clinical trials. However, like always, I wanna take a look at my favorite study of all time, a network meta-analysis of 522 randomized controlled trials that compared 21 of the top antidepressants. And when we look at this study, we can see that velazidone was in the middle of the pack when it came to efficacy. It's probably better than a drug like verboxetine, but it's probably not quite as good as an antidepressant like amitriptyline. Next, when it came to side effects, the study found that velazidone was lacking. It was closer to the bottom of the pack. Velazidone, it might cause less side effects compared to a drug like clomipramine, but it's probably gonna cause more side effects compared to an excellent drug like floxetine. Now let's talk a little bit more about side effects. And the most common side effects that patients experience include diarrhea, nausea, and headache. Other common side effects include dry mouth, vomiting, dizziness, insomnia, abnormal dreams, and sexual dysfunction. 
Like other antidepressants, most side effects should go away over time as the body adjusts to the medication and can be reduced by increasing the dose slowly. When it comes to sexual dysfunction, velazodone does fortunately appear to be better than other antidepressants, but it still appears to affect roughly one in 10 patients and when it comes to weight gain, velazodone seems to cause less of it compared to other antidepressants with an average of 1.7 kilograms gained after one year of use. When it comes to QT prolongation or heart rhythm issues, velazodone does not appear to cause this issue. Just like other antidepressants, velazodone can, however, cause more rare but serious side effects. Young adults may have an increased risk for suicidal ideation when the medication is initiated and during dose increases. Velazodone can also be dangerous if the patient overdoses on the medication. There have been reports of a serotonin syndrome, hallucinations, and disorientation when Velazodone is taken at five to seven times the maximum dose, which is 200 to 280 milligrams. In addition, there was one case report of a toddler who experienced seizures and was hospitalized after taking a 60 milligram dose of the drug. Fortunately, the toddler has made a full recovery. Now, when it comes to drug-drug interactions, velazodone interacts with NSAIDs like ibuprofen, naproxen, and diclofenac. Both velazodone and NSAIDs mess with platelets and can increase the risk for bleeding when mixed together. Velazodone may also increase the risk of the serotonin syndrome. This is further increased if you take it with other drugs that also increase serotonin, such as monoamine oxidase inhibitors, other antidepressants, stimulants, and the cough suppressant dextromethorphan. Velazodone can also cause psychomotor impairment, which is increased with alcohol, cannabis, and other sedating drugs. And velazodone may cause or worsen the manic phase in those with bipolar disorder. Now that we've covered side effects, let's talk about costs and coverage. Unfortunately, as a new drug, velazodone is patented and is typically very expensive without insurance. Although I do see some generics available in the States. So if you are able to get your hands on a generic, that is what I would recommend you would end up saving a lot of money. However, if you're not able to get a generic version of the drug and cost is a barrier to you, I would recommend asking your provider for a cheaper alternative, such as an escitalopram, a citalopram, a bupropion, a mirtazapine, as these drugs are typically just as effective and tend to only differ in terms of side effects. But if you've got deep pockets and great insurance coverage, velazodone is certainly a good option when it comes to a modern antidepressant. Anyways, that's all I have to talk about when it comes to velazodone. To review, the benefits that velazodone has over other antidepressants include a theoretical quicker onset, a lower risk of experiencing sexual dysfunction, weight gain, or QT prolongation. The cons of velazodone is that it is only approved for treating depression, it needs to be taken with food to ensure adequate absorption, it can cause a discontinuation syndrome, it's only been studied in placebo controlled trials for 8 week periods, and for those who cannot access a cheaper generic, it is quite expensive. Anyways, that's all I have to talk to you about when it comes to velazodone. I hope you found value in this video and I can't wait to see you in the next one.